Now, obviously, with your coaching uh, and and your work with Jack Canfield and others, you use EFT uh, mm -hmm. for working with people with stress or trauma or anxiety. Can you talk a little bit about EFT and how also that applies to music? Absolutely. I actually, I, I actually love EFT, which some people call tapping. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, uh, let me define it first. It's a simple self-administered acupressure technique that's been scientifically proven to calm the amygdala, the fear center of the brain, and lower the cortisol or the stress hormone levels in the bloodstream. So when you tap, and it looks kind of odd, and, you know, you're tapping on spots on your face, um, what you're doing is you're, you're sending your body, uh, your subconscious mind signals to calm down so that anything that you're entertaining, whether it's, you know, oh, I have a performance coming up later and I'm nervous, or, um, you know, what are they going to think of me or something like that? Those thoughts can be um, sort of reframed in your head. Um, and I know that you're familiar with uh, tapping, David, but I want to make sure that I, to explain it. I am such a big fan of tapping that I actually put it in the third Play the Heart Beautifully book. Because once we got to the third book and we were talking about techniques, I knew we were dealing with advanced concepts and people would be looking to perform. And I wanted to give them a technique that might help them. Uh, um, you know, be able to perform with less anxiety. Wow! So, how did you put that in there? In what? In what I just context? A of, just a couple of pages with a diagram, and here's what you do, and here's what you say, and um, so there's a small chapter on on EFT in the book, and said, you know, if you're if you're nervous about things, this is something you might want to try before you perform. That's fantastic. Would you be willing to give us a little demonstration on that? Yeah, on, absolutely. On EFT, okay, and maybe imagining someone who is some stage fright or whether going into the studio, some performance anxiety? Mm -hmm. um, sure. So uh, there's so many different ways to do EFT, but, but one of the things that, that stops people or stumps them as they're looking at doing tapping is uh, because it's a modality where you tap and say things, they say, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Um, and so I think the, the best thing that I can do is to uh, demonstrate, uh, you know, uh, two different ways that you might calm yourself down with tapping that are both pretty simple. Okay. So I'll, sh I'll first show the points mm -hmm. and then we'll um, go into how you might use this. Great. So um, you can use either hand, doesn't matter, whichever hand's free, and you're going to tap on um, – uh, some some points and I'll just show them and you can I mean you can google this stuff on the internet and see the points if you forget them sure but um top of the head um then eyebrow point which is the start of the eyebrow either side mm -hmm. um outside of the eye under the eye under the nose uh, what they call the chin point which is right here between the chin and lower lip the collarbone point I'm going to have to take off my scarf to do this um which is right here on the outside of the two bony protrusions. And then there is another point, which is under the arm. You can't see that on the video, but it's, yeah. it's down on the side um, under the armpit about four inches. So those are all the points, pretty simple. And the way that, um, the way that I like to tell people to do it is I, it's called tap and rant. Tap and rant. So tap and rant. Yeah. So you would rant about your fears. You know, we're so used to pushing down the emotions that we don't want to feel, pushing down the things that we are afraid to come up. This is where you actually get to to speak them and give them voice. Mm -hmm. So I would tap around just talking um, almost as though I had picked up the phone to call my best friend mm -hmm. and I were just going to tell her everything I'm feeling. I am so nervous about this performance. And then tapping her. I am, oh, I'm so scared thinking about it. I'm afraid they're going to throw them rotten tomatoes. No, they're just going to hate me. Um, they're going to give, give me bad reviews. I'll never want to pick up my instrument again. Um, and so you're just, you're just giving voice as you tap through all these points to everything that you're feeling. And it, a lot of people will assume, oh, you know, I'll just tap a few points and it'll go away. Actually, I find that if you tap for five or ten minutes and you keep looking for what do I feel, what do I feel, what do I feel, that you'll um, eventually get to a point where you say, Huh. Okay. Um, I'm not sure what I feel, or I, I'm I'm not feeling as nervous anymore. How did that happen? Because you've tapped through all the issues. Uh, the other way that you can do it, um, some people just aren't as verbal, and they're more tuned into their bodies, um, tuned in kinesthetically to what's going on. So that is, um, I'm not going to confuse you with a lot of points. I'm just going to say tap one point. Collarbone point's my favorite. Okay. 
Okay. So I would just tap the collarbone point and I would look for what do I feel in my body? Like if, if I were to say, how do I know I'm nervous? Well, I got butterflies in my stomach. Okay. So I'm, I'm focusing on the butterflies in my stomach. How many butterflies are there? Well, I think there are 10. Okay. What color are the butterflies? Mm, they are blue and orange. Okay. So then I'm like focusing on the butterflies. I'm not trying to change them. I'm not trying to get them to fly away. I'm just focusing on that feeling or I have a sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach. It feels like I want to sink into the floor. Okay, great. Tell me about that. What, what size is it? Is it steel or is it wood? And I just keep describing it and observing it. And as I do that, I find that, um, that over time that sensation tends to shrink or even go away. Mm. So two different ways that you can use tapping. This is a simpler um, of, for the kinesthetics. If you like to rant and yeah. <laughs> you're used to picking up the phone and calling your friend, right. you may want to try all the points and just talking through it. That's fantastic. And and also, is there a process of reframing or changing some of those fear statements into more positive statements? There is. Um, you know, for me, um, Tapping is just a, a, a modality. It's a yeah. it's a way of um, uh, accessing the subconscious through through touch on the body. That what it's really designed to do is have us consider more empowering thoughts. And if if you know the thought that you want to go to, like if you want to, it's not very useful to go to a positive thought like. I'm going to give a great performance because mm -hmm. you don't know whether you are. Right. But you might go to a thought that you can control, like, you know what? I choose to enjoy this performance no matter what. Mm -hmm. Now, that's, that might be an empowering thought. And yes. if you enjoy your performance, you're more likely to be relaxed and right. you're probably going to give a better one anyway. Right. Um, the thing is, as much as I love the reframes, if you, if you try to go to the reframe too soon, like I'm tapping, oh, I'm so scared, I'm so scared of this performance. I choose to enjoy this performance no matter what. And everything in your body is screaming, no, you're not going to, it's scary. Mm. Uh, you cannot go to that reframe too quickly. Yeah. Um, I think that once you you tap and you're in a neutral place, mm -hmm. and then you're like, hmm, I don't feel scared anymore. I feel kind of foggy or, or out of it, or I'm not clear about what I was actually, I've actually tapped to the point where I'm going, I, I've forgotten what I was tapping on. Um, at that point, I can start entertaining the positives, and that's what that's what tapping is so powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fantastic. So I think we've answered the question of what would you be doing if you weren't a professional musician anymore, <laughs> transformational business coach, and very successful at that as well. So.